Hello and welcome. I'm Kennedy Cook and here at CBS News Colorado, we take pride in elevating black voices all throughout the year. We're fortunate to have with us three lawmakers here to discuss their priorities this year, all members of the Democratic Black Caucus. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Again. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much. Now we're joined by Representative Jennifer Bacon, Senator James Coleman, and Representative Leslie Herod. Um, <laughs> we already thanked you all for being here. So for starters, we know there's plenty of issues to talk about. If each of you would mind just running down what some of your main priorities are this year, we'll start with Representative Bacon. Well, thank you for having us and thank you for elevating our voices. Um, I have the privilege of serving as the chair of the Black Caucus and what really binds us in our work is being able to question some of the systems around us and dismantle them so that we can find better outcomes for African Americans as well as our neighbors across the state. Um, and so you will expect to see bills like that from us. Um, we look at education, we look at disparities in healthcare, and we look at disparities in being able to build wealth. And so each one of us will likely carry a bill in each one of those areas. Very nice. Yeah. Just to piggyback off of what Rep Bacon said, Kennedy, I think the thing that we are most focused on right now is figuring out a way for not only our youth, but also even our elders, people who help build the city in which we're in right now, the state in which we're in, to be able to thrive. And we recognize that all these issues, whether it's health care, it's housing, it's education, as, as Red Bacon said, all these issues impact us no matter what age we are, no matter what our ethnicity and our backgrounds are. And so we're really excited to be able to work on all those policies with our colleagues at the legislature. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm proud to be in my last year in the legislature. I have served for eight years in the wow. state house, going into my eighth year. And one thing that um, I've noticed is we have grown the Black Caucus from small numbers, two, three, one person serving at a time, to now 11 of us. Mm -hmm. We have passed dozens of bills related specifically uh, to the lives of Black Coloradans. But I think if you talk to some of our neighbors, they might say they haven't felt uh, the changes in their everyday lives. And so what we're doing is really honing in on the bills that we've passed, um, what is working and what is not working, and how we can continue to ensure that black Coloradans thrive. And that's in all areas, education, health care, uh, criminal justice, uh, any of those areas are really ones where we need to see more parity in how uh, and the outcomes for black Coloradans. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing all of that. And you mentioned the Black Caucus. We know that the Democratic Black Caucus is sponsoring legislation for a pretty comprehensive study on the history and legacy of slavery, slavery right here in Colorado, specifically to try to quantify and back by hard data the way people have been affected by systematic inequalities um, across areas such as housing, health care, education, and more. Now, what is kind of the thinking behind creating this study? And maybe more importantly, why is this study so important? Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to share. <laughs> Kennedy, this study is so important because when we go to the Capitol, people always ask, what is the purpose of what we're doing? What does the data show? Why are we running these kinds of policies? And I think it's important that we create a bill that ultimately turns into a task force where we study all these issues we just got finished talking about and how they have impacted us systemically. So we want to make sure that we have that empirical data. We know anecdotally, as you just look around, a lot of the issues that we face in the black community. But we want to make sure that we're also supporting our colleagues with the information they need to confidently support this policy for us to get that data and then see impacts in all those areas improve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, Senator Coleman, um, we talked about this a bit earlier. Is there any sort of anticipated pushback to this um, bill that we're trying to push forward? No, short answer. Uh, we've had an opportunity to be able to have conversations with our colleagues, both in the House and the Senate. This is actually a topic we talked about doing last year, but we wanted to make sure we had the adequate time to prepare for that. And right, So I, I don't believe we'll have pushback because we're doing the work just to make sure that our colleagues see this is a policy that we can all support. Uh, and one last thing I'll say, in Colorado, I love the fact that we are bipartisan. 80 to 85 percent of our bills we pass every single year are bipartisan. And so this is one of those bills we're hoping to be a part of that. And, and I'll just add that it is important to, to note that we have some of the highest ranking uh, members of leadership are members of the Black Caucus and sitting on the couch to, uh, to the right of me. And so I think it's really important to note that while we may anticipate some pushback, and, and that might come from Coloradans who, quite frankly, don't believe that racism is an issue or that it doesn't exist in this day and age in 2024, and it absolutely does. This study will help us put, uh, put us on the right track to how we 
deal with those disparities, how we deal with systemic racism that we know still exists, uh, and give us a roadmap for how we move forward. And so while I think our legislative colleagues will be with us, and of course we look forward to a signature uh, from the governor on the first floor, we might see some pushback around why do we need this? Why do we need this now? Slavery was so long ago. Um, how does that impact Coloradans today? But again, if you look at the outcomes of our black youth in education, of uh, black women uh, as they give birth, you know, mm -hmm. we know uh, black, black uh, Coloradans in home ownership, we know those disparities still exist. And in some places, they exist very clearly along the historic red lines of Denver. And so there is work that we need to do, and this bill and this study will ensure that we do that together. All right, now in terms of getting to the work, Senator Coleman, you mentioned making sure you all have enough time. What exactly is the timeline and what happens once the study is completed? So the bill um, has been introduced, and so it goes through both chambers of the legislature. We'll hear it in committee soon, um, and then the Senate will debate it, and they'll send it over to the House for us to follow suit. And so a bill could be passed, theoretically, um, as soon as a month. Um, but we are still in the beginning phases of, you know, introducing the bill to our colleagues formally. Um, and so we anticipate not only the bill passing, but after we will have the task force come together and we'll see, you know, work being done over the next year to 18 months, possibly two years to really pull together the information. And thanks to the work of our partners, uh, I should note that there will be no cost to taxpayers on this bill. Mm -hmm. um, instead, this will be funded by our partners in the community that want to see this work move forward. And a shout out to History Colorado, to SPIN, and so many others who have been working to make this bill happen. Mm -hmm. Chic. Mm -hmm. Chic, yeah. of course. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. Yes, of Gotta course. Gotta get your shout out. Gotta get, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, all, all, all praise where it's due, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and shout out to you for, again, <laughs> elevating black voices. One mm -hmm. of the things we'd love for you to do and everyone listening is to join us. The bill will have a hearing both in the Senate and in the House, but one of the things we want to do is invite folks to come to the Senate on Thursday, February 1st, during Black History Month. Mm. We just got the bill assigned to the committee as well as mm. it'll be in committee on that day. Uh, so Thursday, February 1st, please join us at the Capitol. We would love to have as many folks show up and engage in that process. In the past, we've both run, we've all run bills that ultimately is more of a community town hall feel for the black community and others to join. Mm -hmm. But then the actual bill hearing, the first step in it getting passed will be in the Senate on Thursday, February 1st. And I'm sorry, who will the chair of that committee be? I'm sorry, the chair of that committee <laughs> might be me. Uh -huh. I might be the chair of the <laughs> State Veteran Military Affairs Committee. Um, but just been a real blessing to be able to work with these two and the rest of the members of the Black Caucus on other policies we've done in the past. And this will be another one yet still on Thursday, February 1st in the Senate. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd just like to build on that. We will have an opportunity as well for our neighbors to come share their stories. One of the things that the Black Caucus began to do under our leadership of our past chair is to have a community um, committee hearing as well. And so we look forward to people reaching out to us, wanting to share as to why this is so important. And so please look for information. You can follow us on our social media sites to be able to come in and share those stories, not only in the community committee hearing, but also formally um, for the Senate hearing, and we'll have another chance as well when the bill comes to the House. Very nice. Exciting times coming up here for you all. We want to pivot a little bit. Uh, we know that we're very aware of how divided the country is politically right now. And more recently, we're seeing how even within the parties, there's division and infighting happening that causes some people to worry. Now, this is one of the big issues at the state capitol now. How do each of you see this division affecting maybe your relationships at the capitol and um, in the community? Yeah. Mm. Well, I think serving in the building in different capacities for almost 50 15, maybe 20 years. We don't want to date me for too long, but I did start right out of college. Um, Colorado has been a place where we have been able to work bipartisanly on most of our pieces of legislation. However, I am disappointed to say that recently we have seen some of the politics of Washington coming into the state capitol. Um, under our leadership, we have been working to ensure that we bring down some of that divisiveness, some of those personal attacks, so that we can focus on the work at hand. As the Black Caucus, that's what we intend to do. We intend to focus on the facts. We intend to focus on the voices of our community and pull away from that partisanship that has, quite frankly, embedded itself in Washington and is trying to seep its way into Colorado. Coloradans don't have time for that. Mm. They don't have time for the games or the 
drama or the political theater. We need to do work for Coloradans today because Coloradans are feeling the pain of the increased cost of, of living, um, of not knowing, you know, if where their next meal is going to come from. We've got the migrant crisis happening alongside of um, our unhoused neighbors not having a place to live. We have too much work to do to focus on partisan politics. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's it like being a black lawmaker here in Colorado. Yeah. It is an incredible honor and a privilege. Mm -hmm. We have really um, deep responsibilities, not only to our communities, but to folks across the state. I think every single one of us understands what's at stake. And every single one of us knows what it means to be a steward for voices that have been historically disenfranchised. I will say that one of um, the things that is also true sometimes about being an African-American in a predominantly white space is having to carry extra work. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would be wrong if I didn't say that sometimes we have to do a study <laughs> to be able to prove what it is that we know to be true in our communities, um, but we also are willing to do that work. And so on behalf of all of my colleagues who are members of the Black Caucus, please know that we um, are very conscious of the work that we're stepping into and that it comes with um, different types of attention and it comes with different types of expectations for outcomes and work with primarily being the ones to need to put spotlights on what it's like to be disenfranchised. Um, but all of us have stepped up to really lead in such tremendous ways. And we've done some really great work that has not only benefited the black community, but our, number, our, member, our neighbors across the state as well. When we take on issues in civil rights, it helps everyone. And so we've also begun to get our colleagues to understand that they have a role to play too that it can't just all be our work. And I think that's really also what our presence has really brought to the Capitol, to help people also understand some of this freedom work, if you will, and to, to um, maybe change some of their mindsets and be able to take on some of that work as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think with the weight that Representative Bacon spoke about also comes the strength of our community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. I am proud to be in a historically le legacy black seat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, following the footsteps of Mayor Wellington Webb, uh, the Honorable Wilma Webb mm -hmm. and my mentor, Rosemary Marshall. Uh, we always give credit to Senator Gloria Tanner, who mm -hmm. really uh, mentored all of us into these positions. And so uh, I feel very blessed to be in the seat. I feel very honored to have the support of the community and know that the shoulders we stand on and the, sh the shoes that we fill are large, mm -hmm. but that gives us the power, I think, to do this work together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but one unique thing, and I think Senator Coleman can talk about this, is, is being a black man in these seats is also very rare in Colorado. Um, hmm. There are two black men serving now a in a two. black caucus of 11. A whole two brothers. Uh, and to see someone like James really shine, I think hmm. a lot of young black men look up to him and say, young kids look up to him and say, wow, I could actually do that. No, I appreciate that, Rep. Herod. We're blessed to serve in the largest black caucus in the history of the state of Colorado. Wow. Um, and so we have more members than we ever have before. There's only 4% African Americans in the state of Colorado, but we make up over 10% over of the state legislature. Um, so for me, I'm blessed to serve as, as um, Leslie said, in the same seat as Gloria Tanner, but I'm also blessed to serve in the same seat as the first African-American Senate president in Peter Groff, mm -hmm. right? And so when we look around the folks who have helped us get to where we are today, we also have so much support from our community. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of opportunity to partner with groups that are supporting this policy we just named earlier today, along with the Urban League, along with the NAACP. So, you know, it's not easy, right? It's challenging. <laughs> And anything worth doing is probably challenging, but it's such a blessing to be able to have the support from those who've come before us and laid that foundation, mm -hmm. but also the people who are here with us right now in the fight in order to make sure that everybody has opportunity. Mm -hmm. Representation certainly matters. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, for a take-home piece here, what message do you have for viewers at home about engaging in the democratic process and what can people do as we prepare for your head um, in the work here in the state, but also as a country. Mm -hmm. Well, the Capitol is the people's building, and we have certainly been talking about how to be sure that people feel welcome to come in. We only meet uh, for 120 days, and so if you have not been to the Capitol, please reach out to your local legislators. We would love to be able to share the building with you. We are also uh, need to be held accountable to do our work to reach out to our neighbors. Um, all of us can be found, uh, our office, our phone number to email on you know, the state's Colorado uh, General Assembly website. 
Um, but you can also expect to see us in communities. Um, we hope that you all know that the bills that we bring are certainly ideated from our neighbors. Every single mm. one of us um, has a story from someone who lives in our neighborhood that we bring some legislation forward. Um, and so whether it is in Aurora, uh, we have um, wonderful Black Caucus members who represent Aurora, Arapahoe County, Colorado Springs, Boulder. Mm -hmm. um, we have FIRST, the first African immigrant. We have the first Haitian immigrant. Um, we have um, also, we have just the homegrown heroes from the east side of Denver. And so all of us know what it means to be out in community and really want to engage. And so please know that we are completely accessible. You know, please don't be intimidated and also hold us accountable to be able to connect. You can also find us with community organizations. Uh, tonight I'm speaking of the NAACP. We all often speak with urban leaders. And so if there are groups or organizations you'd like to be a part of, please connect with them because they connect with us and we will complete the circle of communication. And as Red Bacon said, our website is ledge.colorado.gov. So leg.colorado.gov. Now all of you who are listening to this amazing program that Kennedy has put together, <laughs> you remember how it felt in November when you were getting mail pieces mm -hmm. and inundated with phone calls and text messages. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as that day is over, it's almost like the conversation stops. Mm -hmm. That is actually the most important day after the election day mm -hmm. where we're involved as a community. So we need your help. It's not just about electing us to come down to the legislature and represent you. It's about you being involved and engaged in that process and giving us ideas, perspectives, uh, feedback on the mm -hmm. policies that we're running. So we want to make sure you do reach out. If you do not know who your senator is or your state representative is, please find out because we do work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just say get involved. As as was already mentioned, get involved. The building mm -hmm. is for the people. You don't have to have an appointment to get into mm -hmm. the Capitol building. Mm -hmm. um, you can walk right in. Um, hopefully when we're in session so that you can find one of us and talk to us. Say what you need to see happen or what you would like to see happen with this piece of legislation or any piece of legislation. But also invite us out into the community. I know it can be intimidating to come into the Capitol. Some people don't know what to wear, how to be. Mm -hmm. You, By the way, you can wear whatever you want. You can be mm -hmm. however you are because it is your building. But mm -hmm. invite us out into the community as well. We would love to talk more about the work that we're doing but also hear from you mm -hmm. about what we need to be doing. We are, sir, we are elected to serve the people. Right, mm -hmm. to serve the people, not the people to serve us. Right. Yeah. And so we want to do that work. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all so much for joining us, Representative Bacon, Senator Coleman, Representative Harriet. We really appreciate you, uh, you all coming out here, and I wish you all the best in your endeavors. And thank you to each of you for making time to be with us, and thanks for joining us here at CBS News Colorado.